Hello, Chef David Rose, and we're here at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center, and today we are making a stout braised lamb shank with a cauliflower puree. It's gonna be so good. Make sure to stay here. We're gonna be featuring the Vulcan Versatile Chef Station. Today, we're making one of my favorites, a stout braised lamb shank with a cauliflower puree. Classic dish, super classic dish, and the shank is essentially the shin of the lamb. And the lamb does not mix a single gym day with legs. So the key to this recipe is braising it, getting a nice hard sear, and breaking down those connective tissues and muscle fibers inside of the meat. So first things first, season your meat. Always season your meat, people. So, it's a pretty big piece of meat. So you wanna do a pretty aggressive seasoning of kosher salt, black pepper, and paprika, and a little bit of onion powder and garlic powder. Cause you wanna ensure that you're seasoning all over so that when you're cooking the meat, it's well seasoned, and the seasonings penetrate all into that delicious shank. So again, recap, if you're not paying attention the first time, salt, pepper, garlic powder, paprika, and onion powder. Nice heavy seasoning all over on both sides. And that's gonna be step one. The beautiful thing about the Vulcan Versatile Chef Station is that you can literally do so many types of cooking while you're using the device. So I wanna hit over here, I have it on the griddle setting, right now at about 360, 365. What we want to do first when you're braising, you want to ensure a nice hard sear on the meat. So that way when you braise, it's not falling apart. The shank retains its shape, has that nice hard caramelized crust on the outside, but that very moist fall apart bone with the meat just coming right off. So step one, we have the oil on the griddle. We're gonna go ahead, take our trusty tongs, when we're doing this, we want to definitely listen out for that sizzle. You want to make sure the griddle is hot on the versatile step station because you want to get that nice hard sear once again. So if you pay attention, you hear that? Literally, music to my ears. Even temperature control on there. And what we're looking for is a nice hard sear on the lamb shank. Once you're done browning and searing off the lamb shank, you're looking for that nice browning on the flesh of the lamb shank, because that color means flavor, it means texture, it means deliciousness. Stay tuned for the rest. All right, once you take these beauties when they're nice and caramelized off of the griddle, you wanna take them off, and you want to keep all that delicious lamb fat, those little burnt bits, and we're going to throw our mirepoix right into the versatile chef station. So mirepoix, one part carrots, celery. I like to keep the celery stems and leaves. I find that the leaves get a nice kind of herbaceousness, a nice kind of layer of flavor. So feel free, try it out. It makes loads of difference in the flavor of the food. Pro tip, write it down. And last but not least, we have some Vidalia onions to add in there. All right, so again, your mirepoix, your onion, your carrots, your celery, and you wanna get that nice and sauteed in all of that lamb fat, because waste not, want not. It's gonna add a really nice depth of flavor. If you find that you need some more fat, feel free to add a little more olive oil in there as well. And what we're looking for at this point right now is to get a nice browning on all of the vegetables. Where the onions begin to caramelize, become translucent, the celery begins to become pork tender, the carrots start getting that nice brown color, and color means flavor. Whenever you're cooking, you don't want bland food, 
Make sure you get that nice caramelization on all of your veggies. So you do that for about a good four to six minutes. And you can tell when it's about there is when it's nice and translucent. The vegetables begin to kind of get tender. You get that nice nuttiness, that nice smell that caramelized vegetables give off. And the bottom of the chef station, the little burnt bits right there, start to come apart and form and bond and get that cohesive deliciousness with the vegetables. All right, so once we get to that point, we're all about building flavors and building layers. What we have here is tomato paste. The tomato paste adds a nice depth of tomato flavor, nice little sweetness that you get from the tomato, and it's gonna also impart color in the finished product. So a little bit of tomato paste goes a long way. And then you wanna incorporate all that tomato paste into those caramelized vegetables and get all of those flavors starting to marry. Now you know you're on the right road to success when the vegetables start smelling delicious. It's a good sign. Alrighty. Who knew sauteing vegetables could be so exciting? Well, now you know. So, once we have all the vegetables and tomato paste in there, nice and caramelized, nice and brown, we wanna then go ahead and deglaze what we have going on. Deglazing essentially is a fancy word for getting all those flavors, all those little tasty bits from the bottom into the braising liquid. So what I have here is some porter beer, Guinness. It's gonna add a nice bitter note to it as well as hints of caramel, vanilla, and we're gonna really drive home those flavors of vanilla, caramel, a little bit of earthiness as well with root beer. So root beer and porter, trust me guys, it's going to be fantastic. So about a bottle of each. And what the alcohol from the stout is gonna go ahead and really release those nice bitter notes and those nice flavors from the bottom of the pan. And it's gonna go ahead and you're gonna reduce that. By reducing the liquid, you're then fortifying those flavors of the porter, of the stout, of the root beer. And it's gonna be a really nice, sweet back note for when we add the beef stock into our braising liquid and put those shanks back in there. It's gonna really add a nice note of tastiness. All right, so you let that reduce by about a third. Let that do its thing. All right, so once that does its thing, you got the tomato paste, you got the onions, you got the celery, you got the carrots, you got the root beer, you got the stout beer. We then add our beef stock. This is going to be our flavorful braising liquid. We're gonna add the shanks back into it, all right? So at this point, what you're looking for is that braising liquid to come back up to a boil. So, once our braising liquid comes up to a boil, we're gonna then put these crusty, delicious looking lamb shanks back into the braising liquid and have it break it down and get it nice and tender. Just like that, you wanna nestle it in that deliciousness that root beer, the mirepoix, the stout beer, the carrots, the onions, the celery that consists of the mirepoix beef stock. And what you do then is you take the cover, it over like so, and the shank is an extremely tough piece of meat. So at this point, you're allowing it to braise, and by braising it, it's gonna break down all that tough connective tissue for about two and a half to three hours till it's fork tender. And trust me, the finished product will be through the roof. Stay tuned. Chef David Rowe is back at it with the next steps for our stout braised lamb shank. And a lamb shank of such beauty deserves some quality size. And what I'm doing today is I'm doing some Swiss chard. We're gonna saute that off. And it's a great substitute for spinach. It's high in fiber, vitamin K, and it's good for the heart. I don't know about you, but I could use as much help as I can in that regards. So what we're gonna start out first is 
We're gonna utilize, once again, the Vulcan Versatile Chef Station and hit that with a little bit of olive oil. From there, I'm gonna add some garlic. Again, you wanna hear that sizzle. That sizzle is a good sound. That sizzle, the thing of beauty. And a little bit of shallot. And from there, we're not looking for deep caramelization, just for a little translucency and to kind of give off the fragrance and nuttiness of the shallot and the garlic. From there, we add our greens. Smelling good already. Pinch of crushed red pepper. Pinch of salt. And black pepper. You want to be very careful for the garlic not to get burnt because burnt garlic is very unpleasant so if you need more oil add it in there and the entire time you're sauteing and incorporating that salt that pepper that garlic that shallot into making delicious greens I'm gonna turn it down some here so you get the same kind of flavors that are familiar to your spinach a little bit earthier a little bit heartier and you get that nice red you from the center of the Swiss chard. So once the chard begins to break down, we wanna add a savory note with the utilization of a little bit of chicken stock. It's gonna act to break down the chard even more and add some nice savoriness, a little bit of umami, and just overall good flavor. Looking good, smelling good. This is gonna pair very well with our lamb checks. All right, so once the chicken stock begins to reduce down and our greens are nice and tender, we are good to go. There you have it. Delicious tender greens, a little bit of chicken stock, the garlic, the shallot, and that little hint of heat from the crushed red pepper. This is going to go so well with our lamb shank. But hold on, not yet. We got one more side, so stay tuned for the next step in our chef series featuring the stout braised lamb shank. It's gonna be a good one. Chef David Rose back at it again at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. And today we are making my famous stout braised lamb shanks. Right now we've shown you step through step how we do the lamb shanks. And we also did some Swiss chard. So what's left is next. You gotta do a starch. If you're like me, you love mashed potatoes, but this starch is gonna be something amazing. You're not gonna miss the flavor of mashed potatoes and they'll even make your pants a little looser. What I'm talking about right now is a cauliflower puree. Those same delicious flavors of butter and creaminess you'd find in mashed potatoes, but half the carbs, virtually no carbs, it's a vegetable. So I'm gonna show you right now how to do it. Back to our Vulcan Versatility Chef Station, about to hit it with some heavy cream. The heavy cream is going to act as a nice mouthfeel and creamy note by steeping and braising the cauliflower in that. So you add the heavy cream, like so, and to that we add a little bit of butter. I prefer unsalted butter, so that way you can control the salt content. With salted butter, I find a lot of the times the salt gets carried away very easily. So unsalted butter, no salt, and from there you add, subtract, omit the salt, whatever you like, but at least now you have the option. All right, pinch of salt. Pinch of garlic powder. And little itty bitty pinch of black pepper. All right, and then from there you bring that up to a boil. Just get that nice and incorporated together. And then we add our cauliflower to that heavy cream that we're boiling. At this point, the heavy cream is going to get all in the inside of the cauliflower, get it nice and tender, and give the cauliflower a nice creamy note once it's braised down, start to break down the cauliflower, get that tender. 
and it's gonna be through the roof amazing. You won't even miss those delicious spuds. I guarantee it. Chef David Rowe is back at it with the next step in our cauliflower puree. So after we go ahead and braise the cauliflower in our heavy cream and our butter and our salt, pepper, and uh, garlic powder, we go ahead, we take it out, we put it into our Roboku or your food processor. Now we make a puree. If you like the consistency to be a little more smoother, feel free to add more heavy cream. If you like it a little bit chunkier, a little more coarser, kind of like your old fashioned, old style mashed potatoes, feel free to omit less heavy cream. I like somewhere in between, so that's what I'm going for right now. All right. So at this point, the cauliflower has broken down from the braising process. It has that nice, creamy texture from the heavy cream, from the butter, all those things you find in delicious mashed potatoes with none of the carbs. It's gonna go so well with the braised lamb shank and the Swiss chard. And stay tuned to see how the dish comes all together. And the only way you can do that is by staying tuned to the Chef Series. Hello, we're coming at you live from the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. I'm David Rose and today, with the power of electricity, we are making some delicious stout braised lamb shank. No peeking. Who I have today with me is a product specialist, Roxanne from Vulcan, who's gonna walk us through and let us know the highlights of the Versatile Chef Station. So Roxanne, please take it away. So the Vulcan Versatile Chef Station is a smart range match braising pan. Everyone knows a braising pan is one of the most versatile pieces of equipment in the kitchen, but what makes this smart are a couple of really cool components. One is the rapid recovery griddle plate that is incorporated in the tank, which has stainless steel on the top and bottom and an aluminum core, which transfers heat five times faster than a standard cold rolled griddle plate. And underneath the tank are six individual heating elements, each one with their own thermocouple. So each one is constantly measuring temperature to maintain accurate temperature across the entire cooking surface. So if I were to use this to make some burgers and I put one cold burger patty on just one of those elements, just that one element is gonna kick on to heat up and come back up to temperature with the rest of the tank. I made a braise, right, or a stock or a soup, and I wanna save that braise or stock or soup. It doesn't tilt like your traditional braising pan, but what it does have it incorporates a drainage system, so if I'm gonna save that braise or that stock, mm -hmm. I simply drop the, the drain, slide in a container, and I can braise that container. Or, if I'm going to clean it out, I can incorporate some water um, with just the push of a button, scrub it down, drain to a floor sink if I have it, or if I don't, I have a little caddy that scoots right underneath, I can drain to that caddy and roll it over to the floor sink and drain it that way. It also incorporates some intuitive controls with some preset um, settings, fryer, boil, and griddle. But I have the ability to take this unit from room temperature up to 450 degrees. So I could melt chocolate or I can sear a steak and anywhere in between. Wow. If I want to set it to 295 degrees, I can do that. And those thermocouples incorporated into the, the plate ensure accuracy at no matter what set temperature. Wow, that is super impressive. My mind is literally blown. I've been searing, I've been braising. The one thing left to do is eat, and for that, you gotta stay tuned to the Chef Series. So what we have here, I wanna go ahead, of course, you always eat with your eyes first. So pretty plates and plating is always a must. So I'm gonna put that creamy cauliflower puree in there with the butter, with the cream, with the salt, with the pepper with the garlic powder, it's so creamy, I doubt you'll miss mashed potatoes. And me and Roxanne love mashed potatoes, <laughs> but these cauliflower puree right here, it's gonna hit the spot. All right, so a little nest of that in the bottom, those delicious garlicky Swiss chard, put that on top, like so. So now I'm right in the middle like that. And Roxanne, do you wanna finish it off for us? You wanna finish it off? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have you go ahead, just take the fork and just carefully put it right in the middle. Okay. I have faith in you. Yeah, okay, you wanna nestle it, because right now we got that nice glazed sauce on there, and put it on there in the middle. 
And this part you can do. I'm a big fan of contrast and textures, contrast and flavors. So what I have here is a crumble. And this is just breadcrumb, butter, salt, pepper. I put it in the pan until it's nice and brown and sauteed. It's gonna get a nice nuttiness. So I'm gonna let you take that and hit it with that on top okay. of there. It's gonna give you that nice crunchiness, the contrast of that delicious, succulent lamb shank, the creamy cauliflower puree. It's gonna be so good. A little more and we are good to go. Okay. All right. And that looks pretty good. What do you mm -hmm. say? Looks delicious. There we have our stout braised lamb shank with the garlicky Swiss chard and that delicious, creamy, make you forget all about mashed potatoes, cauliflower puree, all done on the Vulcan versatile chef station. And only one thing left to do, Roxanne, you know what that is? Taste test. Let's dig in, let's do it. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't even need a knife. There you go, just see? Fall off you see the that? Bone. That Look good braising, right there you go. Do I grab, falling apart. Do I grab all yeah, of it together? Yeah, get you that perfect bite, get some of the cauliflower puree as well. Okay. And then We're friends here. You grab the bite. Now that, that's cool. <laughs> grab some more of me. Grab some All more right. of me. There okay. you go. All right, talk to me. I'm Nancy. Mm. Talk to me. I grab too big of a bite. <laughs> <laughs> it is so it's delicious. Fun. Yes. Again, fall off the bone. Mm -hmm. um, braised. Yes. That creamy cauliflower puree just melts in your mouth. It is so good. Um, and all of it done in the versatile chef station. It's just amazing. You are a wonderful chef. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Okay, yeah. chef. So one of the greatest parts about uh, cooking is the cleaning. Yes, it is. And one really cool thing about the versatile chef station is how easy it is to clean. Um, it is basically its own self-contained unit, so okay. it has an integrated water supply that will mm -hmm. help you to incorporate water in it, scrub it down, and you can drain and clean. Nice. Um, so we do have it set to about 200 degrees, just to kind of loosen up the, the kind of baked on yeah. or uh, cooked on material. We'll use our regular griddle scrubber mm -hmm. and just kind of nice. scrub it down a little bit. Love it. Incorporate some water. Scrub it down. You just remove like four to five steps out of every chef's cleaning process, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, so you don't have to go back and forth to the sink with a big pot of water, big heavy pot of water that can be dangerous. There's, you know, some kitchens are, are really slippery floors, so having an integrated water supply makes it easy to wipe it down and clean and move on to the next cooking yes. uh, method. So yeah. if I just use this as a griddle, I can scrub it down easily, flip it over, yeah. and use the next cooking method really quickly. So. Um, inside, we also have a drain and a little drain caddy, so we're just going to pull the drain and allow the, um, the wastewater to go down into the drain. Very cool. Give it a little hand. If you have a squeegee, that can also help to... All right. So teamwork makes the dream work. All right. So scrub it down. Go ahead and drain it. You're pretty much taking a, uh, a usual 30 minute job and making it to a five minute job right, right. now. And so we would just next wipe it out with a, a rag and then we're ready to move on to the next cooking method. Wow. And ready to go home and come back for the next day, clean, sanitary, easy, efficient steps, a lot safer. I'm all about that. Yep, definitely. Yes.